Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, I'm Dr. Alexis. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I have a background in cosmetic chemistry. And I take all of my knowledge and deliver it to you so that you can make the best skincare decisions. Today, I am answering a question that I get asked an awful lot, which is laser or LED light safe in skin of color? I'm gonna give you a spoiler alert and the short answer is yes, but you wanna be very specific about the type of treatment you're getting and who you're letting perform your treatment. Now, when you go on Google and you type in lasers and skin of color, you're most certain to find some pretty scary images because there are certain light-based modalities that have been documented for causing adverse effects in skin of color. Things like IPL or the Alexandrite or the diode laser have certainly caused a lot of adverse effects that tend to give laser therapy a bad rep for those with skin of color. So today's video is going to be more of a guide so that if you are deciding on getting a laser, you've been thinking about it, you at least know what to look for, what type of provider you should go in, ask questions and get a consultation with before making that final decision. So if that sounds good to you, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. All right guys, so what is a laser? LASER is an acronym that stands for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. LASER technology is crazy complex, guys, so I'm going to oversimplify it by basically just telling you it's the ability to deliver high amounts of energy exactly where we want it to be in a very specific target into the skin called a chromophore. Now, when we're targeting the chromophore melanin, it's going to address hair removal, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, melasma, sun, and age spots. If the chromophore is water, this is when you're targeting and addressing things like fine lines, wrinkles, sagging skin, skin tone, and texture. And then when you are targeting the chromophore hemoglobin, you can work on acne, angiomas, spider veins, and rosacea. Really important, you want to make sure that you're getting the right type of laser. So let's say you are trying to find a laser for laser hair removal or melasma treatment or pigmentation treatment, skin tightening, rejuvenation, truly does not matter. You want to go to someone who has treated many, many, many patients who look like you. You want to ask for the receipts. Can I see some before and after photos? Really important. You don't have to go to someone who necessarily looks like you. You just need to go to someone who knows how to treat patients who looks like you. All right, so for the guidelines, the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you're getting a laser that is safe for your skin tone. Now, when I say skin of color, I'm actually talking about anyone that is tan, olive, brown, or black, because that is all considered skin of color, and you have to be extremely careful when you are seeking laser treatment. You wanna get a laser that is a ND YAG 1064. So this is a long wavelength, laser. This is what has been proven to be the most safe and efficacious for those with skin of color. And if you want the safest margins, you're looking for a 650 microsecond laser. This is because that type of laser is so fast that it actually comes in under something called a thermal relaxation time, which is the amount of time it takes for your skin to actually release the heat. This is very important to making sure that your tissue doesn't actually cause any collateral damage to the other tissue surrounding it. It just gets in there, goes to its target, knows what it's doing, and it's out of there. You also want the long wavelength so that your epidermis, that top layer of skin, is not being affected because that is when you can get things like rebound hyperpigmentations or burns. Still, you got to be careful, guys, because the right laser and the wrong hands can still cause you some discomfort, some pain, or adverse events. So what's the big deal? Why do people with skin of color have to be so careful when it comes to getting laser treatments? Well, I don't have to tell you guys if you have skin of color that if you've ever had a bite or a scratch, it almost immediately will hyperpigment. We just have to be so careful because our skin is particularly vulnerable to any type of significant trauma, which can result in issues with pigmentation and healing because skin of color has more epidermal melanin and it has an increase in the number and size of melanosomes with an activity that is increased in those melanosomes. So skin of color is 
is more prone to hyper or hypopigmentation. Additionally, skin of color has an exaggerated response of skin fibroblasts, which leads to an increased risk of scarring. Okay, great. So now you found the right laser. You found the right provider, you think. So now it's time to go to your appointment. What I would do is have a list of questions for the provider. And you want to make sure that you feel good about that conversation, that you feel comfortable with the person doing your treatment. Also, it's really important that you let that doctor know every medication you have been on because it's important to make sure that you haven't been using anything that would cause adverse reactions or that the doctor may say, all right, let's go ahead and do a break before we can do your treatment. So go in with your homework. Make sure that you have a list of everything you've done. Make sure you have a list of what you're trying to accomplish so that the provider can guide you and give you the best directions. Laser is not for everyone. So you want to make sure that you have an open mind when you go into that visit. All right, so why would you want to seek a laser treatment to begin with? Well, lasers can be extremely effective for laser hair removal. Now, this could just be that you have some hair in a certain part of your body that is undesirable for you. Or it could be that you have something like pseudofolliculitis barbae or ingrown hairs. This affects both men and women. So there are medical reasons to remove hair, but there are also cosmetic reasons to remove hair. So how does laser hair removal work? Well, when you deliver the laser energy onto the skin, the dark pigment or the melanin that's in the hair will absorb the light from the laser, heating up not only the hair but also the matrix cells which form the shaft of the growing hair. This destroys them, causing the hair to fall out, but also decreasing the ability for any new hair to grow. Another condition very successfully treated with laser, especially in those with skin of color, is acne. The laser can actually go down to the sebaceous or oil gland and shrink it so it minimizes the amount of oil that is produced. It can also clear out the inflammatory infiltrate that's happening at the vascular level of acne. In addition, it can decrease the amount of C. acnes or cutie bacterium that's actually within the skin and can help with that exfoliation dead skin cell process. It is overall fantastic fantastic for acne and guess what it gets rid of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation as well. Now I know the great majority of subscribers to my channel are interested in treatments for hyperpigmentation. It's how many of you found me. Whether that's post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or melasma or sunspots or actinic damage etc. You just have to be very careful about who you're choosing to do your procedure, and the type of laser that you use. Now, laser can be very effective because it goes all the way down into the dermis where a lot of dermal pigment lives, and it can break apart the melanocytes in a very safe and effective way. You just want to be very careful. You want to choose someone who knows how to read skin of color so they can appropriately change the parameters as they see what's happening with the skin. But again, a very effective treatment to do with the right laser can be completely catastrophic if you choose the wrong laser or the wrong provider. So be careful with this one, but definitely can safely be done and successfully done. Lasers are also extremely helpful for the vascular component of melasma, which a lot of treatments do not target. Lasers can help with this, which is extremely important in helping with that rebound hyperpigmentation that happens. In addition, because lasers help with vascularity, they're very helpful for rosacea patients. And often those with skin of color are actually misdiagnosed and rosacea is missed. So I would go to someone who is very knowledgeable in this. And if you do indeed have rosacea, inquire about the laser. And those with skin of color can safely do photo rejuvenation as well. So this is helping with a fine lines, wrinkles, sun damage. Again, I would look for that Indiag 1064 laser, but you can get beautiful results with the right laser if you're really just looking to kind of spruce things up or turn back the hands of time. So I'm also commonly asked about radio frequency or RF microneedling devices. The answer is that 
both of these laser and light treatments can be done safely. When you're doing a RF microneedling type of device, you actually want to ask the provider whether or not the needles are coated, or you just want to go on the website and when they mention it, look to see whether or not they mention that the actual tip of the needle is coated. That's really important for protecting your epidermis. So again, when you have skin of color, everything is about protecting that top layer of skin so that you can reduce the amount of thermal energy or destruction that's happening to surrounding tissues. Also with radio frequency or skin tightening, this can safely be done in skin of color as well, but I would not recommend the radio frequency devices that have heat if you have melasma on the face because remember, any type of long-term heat on the face can induce melasma. So you want to be careful about doing any device that's going to constantly be putting lots and lots and lots of heat rubbing over the surface of the skin because the last thing you want to do is induce melasma. Now, if you're doing it for skin tightening and you have no history of melasma, completely different story. Or if you're doing it for an area of the body like your abdomen, then again, completely different story. But you just want to be very careful about the different procedures that you choose. But know that if you are seeking skin tightening, if you want to fix your acne scarring with the radio frequency microneedling device, guys, you can safely do this. You just need to find the right provider and make sure that you're getting the right procedures done with the right equipment. Okay, and the other question that I've seen a lot is are LED devices, so light emitting diode devices, safe for those with skin of color? Yes, guys, they are safe for those with skin of color. We have actually used light emitting diode treatments many years now for all skin types and all skin tones. The actual heat from a light emitting diode does not get transmitted to your skin. Now there have been a multitude of studies for years showing the safety and efficacy of light emitting diode. But that is not to say that there are not some risk with some colors for some people. For example, Blue light or high energy visible light has been shown to worsen hyperpigmentation. So I would not do blue light therapy or treatment if you are prone to hyperpigmentation. However, blue light therapy can be fantastic for those with acne. So again, it just depends on your personal history. You may be wondering how does laser light differ from visible light or the light that we can see? Well, laser uses a single wavelength of light and it uses a collimated beam of this wavelength. The word collimated just means that it's all going in the same direction or it's parallel. Now this forms this very narrow beam and it's extremely focused and precise to target that specific chromophore that we just talked about. Whereas with visible light, this is various different wavelengths depending on the actual color that you're seeing and it's scattered light so it's not very specific. Now if you have melasma don't go sitting under a blue light right we already know that high energy visible light or blue light can indeed induce or worsen hyperpigmentation but there have actually been multiple studies that show that red light and green light are helpful for hyperpigmentation. Green light has also been shown to decrease melanocyte activity, so helpful for those with hyperpigmentation. So again, visible light is a huge spectrum, right? There's all these different lights that we see with our eye, and there are all of these different therapeutic benefits for each different category. It's important that you get your knowledge, guys, and then you don't just assume that you can't do a, a certain treatment, and you also don't just assume that you can. So I'm going to make sure that I list everything down below, but I think it's important to know that you are not left out. There are multiple treatments that you can get. So if you are truly interested in laser and light therapy, know that you you can undoubtedly safely do it. Hey, if there's a doctor that tells you that you can't do it, you thank them, right? Because that means that they did not know how to appropriately treat your skin or that they did not have the right laser or light device for you. So that is called a thank you and move on. Anyway, guys, I hope that this helped you. I hope that this gave you at least a guide to know if you do desire or seek these treatments, you definitely can do them safely. And I hope that this helps you figure out who you can go see, and where you can find the different resources. Until next time, be well.